So I got asked by a subscriber, what's the difference between player issue and replica shorts? And what do I prefer or what can I say? And the first thing that always comes for me to mind is that player issue shirts, at least the most recent ones, are usually a lot tighter fitting, more athletically fitting. Although I have to say I'm wearing here in England, uh, current, in this current England jersey, it's also overall quite tight fitting for um, uh, for a replica jersey, but it's not as stuck to my body as uh, the corresponding uh, player version would be. I have a few shirts where at least I have the same styles in replica and in uh, player issue and it's probably a good uh, way to compare things. I also managed to have four different manufacturers, but it's spaced out. Uh, the most recent one where I have a player issue is 2014 a Puma where I don't have the actual comparison, but uh, we still can get a feeling for things. I actually want to start out way back, uh, speaking 97, 98. Uh, that was the first time that I realized that there's a difference between um, a player issue and a replica. This is from my favorite team here in Austria, Lusk, the away jersey worn from 97, to 98. We have here, this is the replica version and this is the uh, player version. Um, this one is actually quite special already because it has, we, you didn't get back then that easily the number on the back, but this one is actually match worn by a player and they sold it off once they switched supplier. So I'm very Happy to have that and there are lots of stories with this shirt uh, that I will keep for later. But uh, let's go for the obvious differences first. If you look at this, uh, start out with the replica. It's a slightly older shirt. If you look at the material, you see it has these R's in there, but it's overall quite impenetrable. It's all red, black, red, black, red, black. And if you look at it, it's all almost a little bit see-through. And the material feel is kind of thin. I mean, this was a 90s style shirt where the materials for the rep leopard were general a little bit thinner. Still smooth, but kind of thin. Also note that we have the Reebok logo here on the uh, red stripe and we have the uh, club logo on the black stripe. Kind of a little bit far out. Uh, the sponsor is roughly the same. Let's compare this to the player version. Well, since it's an Austrian shirt, the first thing that everyone will kind of notice, there's a lot more commercials on there. Uh, namely, here on the collar, there's even a commercial. Then on the back, there's this big commercial plastered all over. But uh, for its time, this is actually quite nice because there are not too many. But what we have here, first of all, note that the cl uh, club logo is much more centered. We have here the league logo back then and then we have the Reebok logo centered and this here on the replica this was actually kind of a little bit an embossed uh, material here it's just a plastic transfer over. Uh, however the sponsor here is a felt application whereas here it's just plastic going all the way over but the main difference is in the material. If you just look at it there's a lot more structure to it there's actually this ventilation already built in and it's much thicker much sturdier. That is the first thing that anyone will notice when wearing um, a player issue shirt. That there is usually more ventilation. I want to see here. You, you can actually see how kind of structured this is. And this is 1990s, a Reebok style. So, you know, very, very old, but still uh, you can tell the difference. There's finally no difference in the material of the collar, for instance, uh, or the button here on front. But yeah. Those are the main differences back then. Now, the next ones more are teams that most of you will likely um, recognize. If you know Lusk, let me know. And if you know none of my brothers or direct friends. Um, next one we'll go is Milan. Uh, this is the season 2008-2009. Um, it's not the same shirt. I have here the home shirt worn by Maldini in his last, that's the last 
shirt and Maldini ever wore. Of course it's a Maldini, but this is the replica version. I got this from the official Milan store. Uh, and this is a player version from the same year. Now, um, again, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. Uh, one thing that you will realize at first, when you're just, just looking at it here, we have a sponsor. There's no sponsor here. This was a match issue for um, an away game in the Champions League where there was a ban on betting products. Again, let's start again with the material. Uh, this is also kind of a thin material, and although this is a long sleeve, the material here is already a little bit thicker. But the main difference that everyone will notice at first is not necessarily the color, but the three stripes. Here on the home jersey, I don't know if you can see it, this is kind of stitched on, stitched on stripes. On the away jersey, it's a plastic transfer. There's nothing raised, it's just flat, flat, flat. Uh, what is stitched on, funnily enough, is this the bands here on the collar. Uh, the inside is actually quite similar. You can see I've worn this a lot more. Uh, all plastic transfer, then we have here the washing instructions here. Then um, on the replica, there's this button, which is completely missing Oops. which is com completely missing down here. It just says for motion. So this is the uh, player issue. Also the Adidas logo here is a plastic material just glued on there. However, the crest still is stitched on. You can look at the inside. Crest is all stitched on. Yeah. So that's then in addition, there are all type of venting holes. They are actually kind of weird here. You see some venting material here on the sides, running down. It also is here a little bit on the sleeve. Uh, there's this weird venting structure on this shirt, whereas on the home shirt you get only a little bit. And it's not uh, from wearing, you cannot really feel it. It's right here on the side. This is supposed to be some venting. Honestly, this is much less um, letting through some air than the other. Uh, the other funny thing is that for this one, the front is a different texture than here the side panels. The side panels are closer to the player version. And of course this here, the others logo is sewn on. So here you see already some minor difference between player version and actual and, and a replica. But where we can make a direct comparison is with the Spain away from 2010 and the France away from 2010. This is literally the same style, just different shirts. And I probably have to use this opportunity to make a video about this shirt in a minute too. The France is of course the player issue, the Spain is the replica. And the same as I said for the Milan shirts applies here as well. This here is stitched. This here is nicely, uh, I mean, it's a cloth material that's all stitched on. You again have the venting here that's kind of, you know, they, yes, they made a material that has a little bit of holes, but it doesn't do honestly a lot. Here, this is just a plastic over. This is not stitched at all. This is just a plastic. And the venting is much, much, um, it's a much thinner material that actually really lets air through. So uh, then the next comparison, see the three stripes here on the Spain shirt, it is there soon on. Here it's a plastic transfer. Also same goes for the collar, the RFEF here, this is stitched on. It's actually quite nicely done. If you look at this, it's all stitched on. There's an extra thread. The back here is plastic. I'm not sure if this is, you can really see that but this is really a major difference. Now, as for the material, I have to say that they're actually quite comparable, but again, the France shirt feels sturdier. This is a thinner material. The France shirt is a thicker material. So uh, clearly this is from the material, from the material uh, superior product. 
Uh, what I like about this one better is, of course, that this is all stitched. This that would not come off after lots of washing. This one, I'm afraid, may eventually come off sometime. You see, I don't have a number here, and I thought this might actually look nicer, makes it more balanced out here. So this is Adidas. Differences in Adidas shirts between replica and um, player version. If you ask me what do I prefer more, the replica. Not because I like the better material on the player version, but I like the stitching. I really like that this is stitched. The uh, Nikes here is all plastic. This is stitched on this is actual fabric. I always like this one better. But of course, uh, for a player, if I was playing more, of course the player version. It's, uh, there, it's a no-brainer. Um, let's say Nike from the same period. You already saw my Croatia jersey. I have a US jersey from the same period. Why do I have a US jersey? I was living in the US at that point. So uh, this is replica. This is player version. If you go back to my Croatia video, uh, you will already have seen that you can actually see through the back here. You cannot do this on this one, although it is white. Let me hang this here. There is no see-through here. This is all one material. It is also a much um, wider cut. And look here, we have, we have some ventilation that actually is working. This is similar to what the Adidas player version has. But if you look at what the player version has, That's true ventilation. If you're running, you feel this. And the back, since it's all see-through, more or less, this is really well ventilated. Of course, both of these shirts have um, USA Rivatska on the back and, you know, the similar this Band-Aid style here. But if I compare the materials, this is, a, um, actually, this has a, a slightly bubble feel on the inside. This is all smooth. Completely different material. Um, the other, the last thing that I was saying, both have on the inside a logo. We have here on the inside Uvia Gwierni, and on the US we have the Don't Tread on Me snake logo. But uh, yeah, and then we have this band is here. That's only on the replica. Um, and there was one more thing about. This, yeah, this logo is stitched on. This logo is also stitched on. So Nike did not stitch on the logos, on, uh, did not use plastic transfer until a little bit later. You probably can see already the sweat pearls. It's a pretty hot day out, outside and the room is not exactly light. But let's get to the last one and that's a Puma. I don't have, I cannot really show you a Puma um, Replica. I mean, I have a Puma Rap replica here, but that's the, from 2010, the Cameroon shirt. But I actually want to show this one. Uh, Puma replica, similar thing. They have the stitched logos, uh, but here is an Italy one, a long sleeve, 2014 to 2015. Uh, again, not the tight fitting version. The same thing goes for the Adidas. I don't get the super tight fit fitting ones because I like my shirts a little bit looser. Some like it more tight fitting, get the tight fitting one. I, especially for the 2010 Adidas, I don't like the super tight thing. It actually looks a little bit like on the back, you know, you have a bra or something like that. It was a really, really weird. I was very happy to get this just with this plain look. And similarly here, Puma also usually uh, of late gets a lot of weird things on the shirt. This is a plain shirt, but it's player version. And there are a few things that you can tell. First of all, if I look up close, look for instance the back. Again, a lot of structure and ventilation on there. All over. It also has an additional seam kind of here on the back that makes it a little bit uh, better fitting. Um, so again, the back is almost see-through. Ah, cannot see here. If I look, if I hold it against the light, I can see some holes running through. Also, all the logos are plastic applications and the interesting part here, and probably it's best to show it on the Italy logo, it looks stitched, but it's all plastic transfer. And actually, I think that this one is holding up quite well. Another thing that's for the player version, but I'm not so sure anymore is 
the button collar. These buttons you cannot take off. This is just for show. This doesn't even open the collar here. It just shows the Italy uh, flag. But this is completely non-functional. I would love to see the real, uh, the replica version of the real version. The replica version, if it's more functional there. Um, I have a feeling it's also not because the France jersey 2018 that I have, the button, yes, you can take the button off, but that's about it. But here you cannot even button the jersey. It is always open. The collar is kind of white, uh, but yeah, this is a really nice jersey. The other thing that is, you can see here, these white stripes that they have on front. Since this is not the tight fitting version, this is just one stripe, but there is more structure to it on the really tight fitting version. And of course, there are some ventilation panels on the side, um, which go all the way to the back. Well, what do I like better? As I said, I like the replica, I like the stitch stuff, but everyone their own. Uh, the player versions, if I can get them cheap, of course I will get them. All these shirts I got for relatively cheap. Some people like tight fitting jerseys better. Uh, not necessarily me, I like it looser. Maybe I'm a kid from the 90s. We liked looser clothing. Although I don't mind now if it's a little bit tighter fitting. I have to say that the first tight fitting shirt that I had were the Kappa shirts of the 2002 Italy and uh, Roma. And I actually liked really how close it was to your body. It really felt like a second skin in a way. And had this material that was very, very um, nice. A little bit like this or the Uruguay Puma shirt that I have. They have a similar texture feel to those Kappa sh uh, early Kappa shirts. I haven't had a, uh, seen a Kappa shirt as of late. But uh, as you can see, there are definite differences between a uh, player issue and replica. As I said, the material is usually better on the player issue. I even think if you would have cats, there are less pulls on the player issue. I mean, I haven't had cats uh, in a while. But this one, my first play issue, this was definitely while I was around cats, there are no pulls on this one. Absolutely none. I was holding cats with this one. Uh, on the other one, I'm not sure if there's none because this is one that I also know. Yeah, there are a few. If you look here on the front, there are right here just a few that you can see. Nothing really that visible. Uh, so the player issues are more sturdy in that type of sense. Um, what became a big issue for me is, and you can see it on the thing, yes, this kind of washing off. I, all these plastic materials I don't trust to be really sturdy and long lasting. And for that reason, I like it when there's actual cloth, like this England shirt. This is stitched on. This is not a plastic. This is a real thing. Yeah. And then I take thinner cheaper feeling material. I think you still get a good jersey for the price. Uh, I mean, price-wise, it's no, there's no comparison. If I have to choose at full price between a rep replica and player version, replica wins out. Uh, it's just the economics of it. Um, however, if I get in sale, like on classic football shirts, for instance, um, I might be swayed by a player issue because it has just a special feel. I'm happy about all these player issues that I have here. They're all a little bit special. All, there's always something about it. So this is nice to have for a collection. Um, but again, my person, I'm a little, I made this decision uh, probably about four years, years ago, finally. Uh, I wanted to get a Brazil shirt. I had the replica, I had the player issue. And in the end, I decided for the replica because it was just a little bit nicer. With, I just like the crest being of cloth material. Well, those are my two cents on it. It was quite a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know what you think, player issue or replica. Of course, match worn for the real collectors, but you know, I just want to have the shirts. I don't necessarily need to have them uh, worn with all the sweat and on there. They get sweaty enough when I wear them. So <laughs> that's what I think about it. But let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.